Our next uh, presentation is going to be uh, about the OFP reference uh, architecture. And so Surab is going to review a description of the architecture and provide an overview of the data entry along with reporting. Surab's background, Surab Roy is a global director with Emphasis Energy Business Unit and is Emphasis focal point for the Open Footprint Forum, along with the OSDU Forum Consortium. And in his current role, Surab is responsible for leading energy transition and digital transformation initiatives for Emphasis Energy oil and gas clients. So there you go, Surab. Uh, I'll turn it over to you and uh, just make sure that you just uh, put your um, clicker on the slide and then you can move the arrow forward or backward. Thank you, Heidi. Um, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. Um, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, just trying to move the slide. Um, thank you everyone for joining in. Greetings uh, from whichever part of the world you're joining us from. Um, today's session, um, we're going to cover um, the reference architecture, um, the implementation of it, uh, the data entry aspects of it, and the reporting. Uh, we absolutely appreciate um, you joining us and sharing the common vision with us, um, you know, the way we are moving towards um, getting a better planet um, as we move forward with this initiative. Um, all right, um, so what we're going to cover is there are two parts to the conversation for particularly this session. One is um, going to be the technical architecture aspects of it, and the other is the default um, user interface that the group has implemented. And I said default because um, as we go through the architecture, we would kind of communicate to yourselves in terms of what you've heard in the past right now in the morning um, about the ability for organizations to create their own applications on top of the data platform. Uh, and so therefore the, um, the default uh, aspects of it in terms of the UI, <coughs> excuse me. But before um, I move forward, I think a few things that we want to call out. Uh, first thing is the key contributions aspects of it. This is more of the credit, uh, the reference implementation and the architecture. You know, while the group um, and the consortium members have reviewed it, I especially want to call out the individuals uh, and the companies that contributed to it. And, and those are IBM, um, Infosys, Shell, and Wipro. So I kind of represent them as I walk you through the, uh, the reference architecture, uh, as well as the user interface aspects of it. Um, so moving on, uh, before we get into the details of it, and I think um, um, you know through the through the through the session today, uh, we kind of worked on as to what exactly um, has been implemented. But just to kind of do a quick recap, so that we can connect the dots in terms of uh, how exactly uh, the objective of Open Footprint has gotten translated uh, into how we how we have implemented the MVP one, uh, how exactly the reference architecture looks like. Uh, what are the scalability and the aspects of it? Um, so just to call out, I think we all appreciate the challenge. We are looking at you know the lack of standards for storing, defining, um, accessing, and exchanging uh, the GAG scope data across the supply chain. And I think we we got to highlight the fact, and we we heard Anna talk about it. We we heard the you know the the, the questions that came in today, um, the the scope three aspects of it, and exchange of data. Uh, across the supply chain, I think that's becoming the key challenge. And so therefore, from a forum perspective, the Open Footprint Forum perspective, I think um, a few things are very important for us to kind of reiterate. Uh, one is that this is not a particular industry initiative. This is across all industries because we cannot measure uh, if we are not covering all the industries, um, you know, because as, as I think um, I read it on the one of the slides, um, scope one and scope two for my organization is scope three for another organization. Um, this is about you know the definition and the standard. So you heard Somali talk about the ones that we are referring to at this point of time and the roadmap ahead. Um, early in the morning, you heard about um, Gomar um, and Sami talk about the the data definitions aspect of it, the data model aspects of it. But one key thing that I want to call out is that you know open footprint for from our standpoint is just not about the standards it is, but it equally is about the you know the implementation aspects of it, the data platform aspects of it, and which is what we're going to cover here today. Um, so from a um, you know as we move forward, 
Um, the first part of it is the, the technology architecture. And as we get into the architecture aspects of it, I think some principles are really important. So there are these 12 principles um, that you see on the screen right now. Uh, and these are the technology principles that we are adhering to to ensure that the data platform first and foremost in big ball letters is open source. Anybody can leverage it. Anybody can contribute to it. Anybody can implement it. Uh, on whatever tech stacks you know you have, as long as you're following the standards uh, provide you know with, that we are uh, that we have identified. Um, the other thing I think uh, is really important for us to highlight that you know um, for us to get a head start on kind of creating the the minimum viable product 1.0, um, get a head start on that. What we have done is we have referenced back to the OSDU um, data platform architecture, and those who do not know OSDU, it's it's an energy industry initiative on the subsurface data universe. We created uh, an open source platform um, across the you know uh, multiple cloud providers. What we have done is we have ex you know we have tried to leverage that um, data platform so that we can get a head start about you know accelerating the deployment aspects of it for this data platform. Um, so that's that's what um, has given us you know the the lead that we that we could just deploy it real quick using the the work that has already been done by OSDU. And you can and again I think in Heidi's initial note she talked about the open groups uh, OSD initiative. You can read more about it uh, uh, you know from an open group perspective. I think uh, you know the one thing that to be called out again important is that you can deploy it on the infrastructure you choose. For the MVP one, for the implementation that we have done, we have implemented this on IBM Red Hat's OpenShift from a uh, from a you know um, the cloud standpoint, um, as well as uh, the container platform standpoint, um, and so that's what you would see. We will talk about it more as we get into the next slides. But just to call out the key principles, you know, you were looking at the availability aspects of it, the scalability aspects of it, the authorization element of it, so there should be proper role-based access uh, for you to see what data. And that kind of has uh, driven the fact that, you know, we have looked at the user interfaces aspects of it from a, from a persona standpoint and saying that, you know, oh, if you are more of somebody, you know, who was, who was the overarching in charge of the data versus somebody who's trying to look at the emissions aspects of it versus if you're an audit organization, which parts of the data, what do you look at it, and so on and so forth. So these principles have guided us to get to that point uh, in the uh, in our data platform structure. Um, moving on, um, as we kind of go through it, and this is this is one of the core uh, aspects of it. You saw this slide, uh, the, 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 at least the architecture diagram in, in different shapes today. Um, this is just a simplified way of calling out two things. Um, I think the first is, that there are the blue elements that you see in here, um, which is uh, a contribution uh, by the organizations to create the data platform. Um, so it's, uh, the infrastructure element of it, the container platform, as I mentioned about the IBM Red Hat, uh, the data ingestion services, the platform services, and the application program interfaces, which is the API. So essentially what we're saying is, um, and I, I realize this is more of a technology conversation. I'm going to bring in the business element of it so that we can identify as to how this is this is actually going to work for your organizations as you adopt the uh, open footprints um, data platform. But essentially what we're saying is that some of these elements are core to the platform and those are contributions, those are available that you can download. But there is a competing area. Uh, and which is what you see in the green uh, box um, right at the top, which says the user interface or the consumption apps. Um, and this is the area where the organizations are free to choose or develop or integrate the applications that they want to. The, the default user interface that I'm going to talk about a little later in this presentation is just an example of how we can extend the APIs that are provided by the underlying data platform to create an application of sorts, let's just say for data entry or for reporting, that kind of a thing. But just an example, um, you know, there, there is absolute ability for anybody to kind of plug in uh, if they are using something which is available today in terms of, you know, data entry and reporting, or they want to build something which is, you know, a, a custom developed um, application of sorts. Uh, but few things um, to note out, I think uh, this can be deployed on any technology as long as we are compliant to the standards. Again, repeating open source, 100% uh, open source. Um, you know, there is a focus on, a, as you can see from the stack of it, there's a focus on microservices based architecture. Um, <clears throat> the top part provided us the ability to kind of create a place in the future so that, you know, there is enough 
um, healthy competition available and we get the best that we can use in terms of the apps available. Um, and so those are the key elements um, at this point of time in the data architecture, the platform architecture in here. Um, if you if you look up the open footprint website, um, you would also uh, find a link wherein we have this uh, mentioned and I have put the link at the bottom of the slide, which says, you know, the, the model dot PDF that explains in detail about the various components, um, a, a further general view of, you know, um, the, the modules that, that are available and how exactly all of this comes together to offer the data platform. I will, if there are not, pause for a moment, um, moving on, I think from a perspective of, um, and this part that you see the next slide, which is the slide number 67 coming up for y'all, um, is essentially the focus is on the user interface and reports architecture. And why we are bringing this up is just to let you know how easy it is to kind of get the platform in, you know, installed in your environment and then kind of link it up to any of the um, applications that you may have or just uh, consume the APIs that you, that you see from the underlying platform. So ODI, what you see is basically the open data interface platform, um, and that's what we have built on the uh, on the IBM architecture right now, uh, especially from a, a Red Hat OpenShift perspective. One thing that I want to call out here uh, is the authentication element of it. So you see the key cloak that is mentioned on the right hand side. Essentially, that's our identity provider. So we're using that IDP tool to authenticate users. And so to my Previous point where I mentioned that you know we um, you know we we kind of looked at it from a persona based aspects of it as to what role based access would be needed. Uh, Keyclo gives us that um, the authentication and the authorization elements of it on the platform to determine you know who gets to access what kind of data, how they log in, and so on and so forth. Uh, what is also going to come up is in tomorrow's session, and I think Sammy mentioned that earlier today. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to demo uh, the user interface uh, with us uh, with an example of how exactly this is going to work. So you will actually see this working versus just looking at the block diagram that I'm putting it on the screen right now. If you just look at the diagram, what it essentially means is that there are APIs extended. You basically consume the APIs and then just create forms if you were doing a custom development um, uh, to kind of consume the data platform and you know uh, either write into it or just export the data and kind of see the data on it. So that's more on the, um, the reference architecture. Um, in the interest of time, um, I will move forward uh, into the next part of this thing, or rather I should pause for a moment. Are there any pressing questions at this point of time or do we take questions towards the end? I, I, I think we can do the questions at the end. So yeah, keep, keep going, Soros, Rob, and I'll uh, we'll pick up some of the questions that are coming through. Okay, all right, Sammy, thank you for that. Um, so uh, the next part that we're going to talk about is just a trailer of the user interface de and the design uh, of how things have come together. And so this is uh, what you look at the screen is uh, a default view of the the UI um, that the teams have uh, created. Uh, to kind of talk about how we're going to um, use the data platform. Um, um, I again repeat myself there. This is just one uh, view of it in terms of, you know, the UI that you can use to access the, the underlying data platform. You're free to create your own, uh, consume the APIs and create your own applications and, and reporting suites. But essentially, um, if we look at um, the, you know, uh, on, on, on this thing, and, and I think this ties back to most of the conversation that happened earlier today in terms of the boundary conditions in terms of uh, creating the organization structure and hierarchy within the platform in terms of capturing the emission data and reporting. Um, so all of those have formed the basis uh, of today, you know, of this platform. So if you just look at it uh, from a perspective of, um, you know, the, the tiles that you see in here, and this kind of is the workflow uh, that would that would work out um, as you kind of you know uh, start leveraging the open um, footprints data platform. Um, there is an ability provided for you to kind of set up your organization hierarchy, uh, and this could be from a you know from a field asset perspective. This could be from a equipment perspective. This could be from a corporate office perspective, based upon scope one, scope two, what you're looking at, and then the future in the scope three perspective as well. Uh, there is an ability for um, you know for the organizations. Uh, to kind of set up their processes, um, you know, the facilities, uh, all of that. 
and each of this is governed by the industry uh, at, the, at the at the bottom line of it. So based upon the industry, the templates kind of show up and say that you know what kind of um, uh, you know what kind of data do you want to capture in here. So we have provided that flexibility, considering the fact that you know um, every industry, whether uh, whether from aviation to shipping to aluminium to you know oil and gas, um, they have their own different ways. Of reporting some of their um, emissions data, and you would hear more about the um, industry aspects of it in our tomorrow's session, um, which you know um, Ravindra is going to talk about uh, about the various industries that we are covering. Now, once we have uh, you know the ability of this UI, uh, and therefore the underlying platform is that you know once you capture your organization data and the process data, um, you then kind of can go ahead and start capturing your emissions data. Right now, um, you know, um, as part of the MVP 1.0, um, you can just get the data, um, you know, from one of the from from your existing system. So you can just manually enter the data in the system. And again, we're going to show this to you when we kind of uh, give the demo of the platform tomorrow. Um, and once you have the emissions data, then it obviously provides you the ability to generate some, uh, you know, some reports uh, so that you can see it in various, you know, slice and dice format of how the data would look like, um, you know, whether you're tracking it by a process or an equipment or a facility, um, you would be able to do that. Um, the platform also provides the ability to kind of, as I was talking about, the role-based access. So, you know, whether you want to set up your own, um, you know, geographies uh, or the admin elements of it and providing members access and all of that stuff, the administrator should be able to do that. So at a broader level, that's what we have. We do have a placeholder at the, the right hand, which you see as the MVP2. Um, and as we go through today's session and tomorrow's session, um, you would hear about um, the Open Footprint uh, Forums plan about the MVP2, which includes the calculations and the scope three elements of it and how that is going to get embedded uh, into the data platform and you would be able to leverage that. So at a broader level, um, that's the, you know, this is this is what um, we wanted to cover. Uh, a quick question each of these kind of comes together and I think most of it is what so as you can see there's an ability to do the organization hierarchy setup there's an ability to do the boundary condition setup um, you can enter data for a specific period because that becomes very important from a duration standpoint and the time scale standpoint then there are simple tabular reports available to generate data um, and then kind of see the organization hierarchy and the emissions data corresponding to it and then the administration uh, effort of it. So the ballpark level um, that kind of uh, covers uh, the, the the reference architecture. How we have leveraged the reference architecture to create um, the underlying data platform, the MVP 1.0, and then how the default UI right now kind of is a flexibility that allows you know uh, the end user to be able to kind of put in their data. Um, I'll pause. Uh, I'll leave the next few minutes open uh, for any questions. Uh, that we may have on the reference architecture implementation or any of the um, user interface elements of it. And Sammy, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> I've I've got a couple of questions already for you all queued up. So so I think you I think you spoke to some of the IT folks already. So but uh, first question I think from Tabalt is uh, what are the standards required to be compliant with the architecture? Uh, sorry, I just saw. I just see Johan. Uh, Johan, <laughs> sorry. Did you mean to talk? No, you can go oh, ahead. Oh, okay, go ahead. okay, okay. Yeah. I think so. The um, from a standards perspective, I think we we talked about the underlying principles. So if you if you just so there are two aspects of if you just you know the reference implementation is something which is a which will be a downloadable version of it. So once you download the platform, you know it comes with all the the bells and whistles for you to ingest the data uh, to kind of generate the reports and so on and so forth. From a broader uh, industry standpoint perspective, I think Somali covered that in the previous session as to what we are, and so we can share that offline with yourself as to which standards we are following. But maybe, maybe can I add something to that? Uh, you, can, you can hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we can. Okay, thanks. The, the, the primes that you need to worry about is really the, the APIs to integrate your applications into the data platform. Those are public standards we, we come out. What we do inside the data platform, of course, is less relevant because people won't have direct access to it. So your, your prime worry needs to be, I have an application. How does the application get access, make use of the standard APIs to access the data platform? That's really should be focusing at from a standard point of view. Cool, excellent. Yeah. And, 
And then one follow up uh, or one additional questions uh, from Ben. Um, are there any plans to provide a hosted version of the platform beta or otherwise for smaller companies to utilize? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think we would truly benefit uh, by you know, individuals and companies um, leveraging the data platform that we have, especially 1.0 version, because that will also give us the ability to consume the data that your organization today has and help us improve um, the existing you know, the data platform that we have and kind of bake that into our roadmap aspects of it. So, so I think in the next quarter is what I would say that you should have something available. Um, and um, you know, that's what is our goal, uh, so that you can download a version and be able to leverage that. That would also help us, as I mentioned, you know, to kind of see what what are we missing at this point of time within the consortium members, and to kind of bake that into our backlog and a roadmap, so that we kind of you know ensure that your industry, your company, your data that gets covered into our data platform. Yeah, and if I can build on, so I think there's 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 sort of a second part to that. So yes, we'll have the reference implementations that people can download and then. You know, implement in their own landscape, for example, but I think also for some smaller companies, they may not have that infrastructure available. So any views on where there might be, um, you know, other organizations that are providing that reference implementations to, to be leveraged by the smaller companies, I guess is, is more that. Yeah, we, we expect it to happen over time. Uh, we clearly, Sam, Sam, good idea, a good point. We see it also yeah. for the OU environment where companies start providing this as a SaaS of past capability to other companies. I expect the same happening over here. It's just a matter of time. We're very early in the process over here. Uh, but if companies come up with that, they're free to do so. So I expect it to happen exactly what you just said uh, in a in the form of a SaaS type of environment uh, uh, semi. Yes, and just to and just to build maybe one bit on on the standards one. Um, coming back to that one as well. I mean, there's a number of software organizations that I, I know are, are are attending this as well. So I'm sure that you know these standards that we're publishing will also then in, it's not just in this data platform, but ideally get embedded into other SaaS and plat, you know past platforms as well. That that'll then get built in and embedded as well. So it's yeah. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a it's a a full ecosystem of companies, software companies, and service providers. I think that are that are participating. Heidi, there's one question I noticed that we didn't answer previously around governments that Andrew had. Um, did, do you want to pick up that one? Sure. The thanks, Sammy, and and thank you, Sarab. The uh, the question is: uh, Have any governments or associated agencies endorsed or are looking to endorse uh, the OFP? And uh, just to answer that, uh, Andrew, at the moment. We um, are currently in the beginnings of uh, some discussions uh, with some agencies. We welcome, of course, any uh, collaboration or relationship or an endorsement from the government or any um, agencies. And uh, so if you'd like to pick that up and continue that discussion, I'm happy to do so uh, afterwards. So. Um, at the moment, we are, are welcoming, and as Johan pointed out, we're still in the early stages, so uh, any feedback or suggestions or recommendations, you know, that would be very fruitful for us. So, thanks for the question. And thank you. I'll pass it back to Heidi yourself and, and John, back to you on the control. Thank you again. All right, thank you. Um, again, really well done. Excellent, excellent presentation. And so thank you, Surab. So yeah, moving you, on Sarab. to- I'm yeah. sorry, Heidi, I just noticed that Surab has um, some appendices here to his presentation. Obviously these presentations will be made available. So um, all the attendees will be able to see these appendices. I'm just running through them now, but there are a lot of embedded links there, a lot more information and these will be distributed after the event, folks, so you won't miss those. You will see all of those. 